Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm Patty Joe, and I'm filling in for Ed Gerard, a uh, Guild board member. And we are um, uh, joining into the next installment of the Guild of Music Supervisor East Mental Health and Wellbeing Series. Um, tonight's event is hosted by our very own Al Risi. And um, actually, before we begin, I wanted to congratulate all the winners uh, and the nominees for the Guild of um, the Guild Awards last weekend. And also a special shout out to all the East Coasters that were nominated and or winners. Um, Sue Jacobs, Michael Ladman, Stephanie Diaz Matos, Michael Hill, uh, Rebecca Grierson, Ed Gerard. Um, hope I'm not leaving anybody out, but just very, very uh, warm congratulations to everybody. But uh, let's dive in to tonight's, uh, yeah, everybody's represented, I hope so. Um, let's d dive into tonight's event. Al Risi, please take it away. Um, and uh, for any of you guys also just um, thinking about joining the Guild, we really, really would love the, uh, you know, to inform you guys on how supportive this community can be in terms of um, education and just representation. There's a lot of work being done with recognition for people's work. So please feel free to get on that website and learn more about how you can participate and join. Um, Al, take it away. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Patty Joe. Appreciate it. And uh, thanks to the GMM, GMS East Committee for all the great health and wellness uh, series so far. Uh, we do have one more coming up after this on May 20th. So you'll want to check that out. Uh, quick special shout out to Joel C. High, Madonna Wade Reed, Jonathan McHugh, and everybody else at the amazing uh, at the GMS for the amazing show on Sunday night. I thought it was super cool, and um, also want to congratulate all the winners as well. Um, okay, so I want to officially welcome you all to the health and wellness panel on the chair on chair stretching with our guide and yoga master Joe Kara. I feel like this would be a great addition to the health and wellness series, particularly during this era of COVID lockdown. I know I'm speaking personally, but uh, you know it's been difficult to get exercise, so I'm really looking forward to getting some tips on how to stay fit from from Joe. So thank you all for zooming in. Uh, just a quick outline. I'm going to give you a little background on uh, Mr. Joe Kara, and then uh, he's going to lead us through about a 30-minute chair stretch session. Uh, that'll be followed by a Q&A, and I encourage you to stick around to the end. Joe's going to have a special offer for all the GMS uh, people here that's attending. So it's, a, it's, it's really a, a great personal pleasure of mine to introduce our guest today. Aside from being one of my favorite people on all the land, Joe is also a highly respected yoga, meditation, and breathwork instructor. He's been teaching at Yoga Works in L.A. for the last 15 years. He also has a very strong connection to our world. Uh, the music world, that is. He's the VP of marketing at Water Tower Music, which is the in-house label for Warner Media. He works on a majority of the soundtracks and scores for Warner Pictures, HBO, DC Comics, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, and other associated entities under the Warner Media umbrella. So he, too, is sitting behind a desk all day listening to music and talking about music just like all of us. So uh, Joe's been in the music business for 25-plus years, and full disclosure, we have known each other for almost that long. Uh, we met very early in our careers at Universal Music, and we've been friends ever since. Um, it just so happens I had the very distinct pleasure of being around when Joe took his very first yoga class. Um, I remember him walking through the door after he took the class, and he was literally glowing. It was it obviously had a very profound effect on him, and um, it was clear, clear to me that at that point that he found the calling. And if you fast forward... It's so about 20 years later, he now teaches regular classes several days a week. He trains people to be instructors. He runs international yoga retreats in places like Tuscany, the French countryside, and Mexico. I can personally vouch for his classes, but also the international retreats. I went to, I went to the Tuscany retreat a few years back. It's really an amazing blend of yoga, culture, and sightseeing. So as you can see, yoga has really cemented itself as a very important part of Joe's life. Music is also a really big part of who Joe is, in addition to his long, successful career in the music business. Joe's also a badass bass player. He might not tell you that, but I will. He plays in a, in a variety of bands, and he's also a graduate of the Berklee College of Music. Joe uh, has found a way, which uh, doesn't surprise me, to join his two passions of yoga and music together. Uh, he integrates live music into his yoga classes. He regularly has live percussion in his classes, including A-list drummers, 
who have shared the stage with people like Lucinda Williams, Moby, Rufus Wainwright, Patti Smith, um, Fiona Apple, and that's just to name a few. So I'll stop rambling. It's really my great pleasure and honor to introduce my dear friend and my brother from another mother, Mr. Joe Carrer. Welcome, Joe. Thanks, Al. I appreciate yeah. that. Thanks for hey, doing everyone. it. Uh, this is my great pleasure. Anytime uh, I get to do something like this, it's uh, it's it's a real joy for me. And I see some some dear friends here, so uh, it, it makes it even more special. Not just you, Al, by the way, but you, you are a dear friend, of course, but not just you. Uh, uh, welcome, right. friends. So nice to be here with you. Um, I was going to give you a super brief overview of what we're going to do. Uh, you know, we have a... Uh, we we tend to um, sorry I have some notes here so I make sure that I give you every stretch I want to want to want to give you we we tend to live a very sedentary life right if you if you think about I, I have my desk showing here which I normally don't in my classes you know if you're here we're endlessly multitasking many of us have multiple uh, multiple monitors where we're here. And I find myself regularly during the day, even though I teach yoga, this is where I'm at. And I don't know if you can see my spine, but I'm rounded. My shoulders are rounded. My chin is forward. Um, and I'm sitting for excessive periods of time. And I don't even realize I'm doing this. But every day I'm imprinting these poor physical patterns in my body. And, um, you know, sitting for long times, deadlines, late nights, uh, listening to music, checking out music, all this, all this stuff. And a lot of our world is centered around if it's not, if it's not the computer, it's the device, same thing happening in our upper body. It's the, especially when you get older and you know, you don't have your glasses or at least me, um, steering wheels, all of this stuff is just shaping our body in a way we don't want it to, that can over time have really, um, uh, can can cause these cause chronic pain. It can cause uh, discomfort, nerve discomfort. It can cause joint discomfort. It can cause disc issues in the back. There's there's a a, a myriad of of uh, negative possibilities that could happen from what we do every day. So I I teach yoga because for a variety of reasons of both mental and physical health. But it it we can counteract all of this stuff. We can counteract all of these patterns by working on implementing other patterns. And that's my whole intro. We're going to work on some, we're going to just work on some, some short, easy desk stretching that I, I really encourage desk or chair stretching that I encourage you to try to implement some, some of this stuff. Uh, if you can, I, I have got to a point where I, if this is me sitting at my desk and I start to round here, I now start to take a little, just a, a ball, a deflated ball, and I stick it right behind my back and it keeps, keeps me dropping in. And then when I start to do this, which I do automatically, that ball falls and I feel it fall or I use a yoga block here and it keeps me sitting up straight. And then when I lean forward, it just falls and I, and I feel it fall and I bring it back up. And then I, I actually have to set an alarm. And once an hour, I have an alarm go off that says, get up, get out of your chair, do a few stretches, do, do, a, do walk around, get outside if you can, even for a few minutes. And that can help balance out that negative pattern that we're showing in the body. So I'm going to take you through a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. If something doesn't feel right in your body, I encourage you to not do it. If something feels uh, uncomfortable, Kristen, you've heard me say this a million times. Um, but if if, uh, if something doesn't feel right in your body, please don't try to push yourself through uh, injury or pain or discomfort. Uh, skip skip the one I'm offering, okay? And um, and so so I'm going to start off. You know, here we are all day long. Easy wrist stretch, arm out to the side or in front of you, I should say, fingers down. Take the other hand. The elbow is not bent. The arm is straight. Just reach back and just draw the fingers back towards you. Okay. I'm gonna start off with just some really general stretching here. And just help to open the front of the forearms and the wrists. This is where we, some of us have carpal tunnel issues, okay? 
Yes. Do you, don't don't overdo it. <laughs> if it causes ouch, you want to back off a little bit. But even just a little bit of energy in that direction can go a long way. Okay. Can also do it this way, and that will that will that that's that's a little bit of an easier way for some of us to do that work. Okay. Do it on both sides. And by the way, I'll try to follow up. I realize one thing. I'm going to offer you a bunch of stretches. I'll try to follow up with like some. I am not an artist, but perhaps some stick figuring of, of these things. So, um, oh, actually, you guys are recording this. So you guys will have a video of this to refer back to. Good. Better than my stick figures. Just a nice opening of the wrist. We're typing all day. This is important. Save these joints so you can just continue typing for long periods of time. <laughs> all right. You might just even notice, just circle the wrists a little bit. And then... This is this is something I really like. So you can see I have my chair. I'm grabbing one side of my chair. So if you can do that, grab one side of the chair. And then from here, move the move the head away from the side you're grabbing. So let's say uh, I'll do my right, but it's your left, right? Bring your left hand down, grab your chair, and then just slowly bring your right ear to your right shoulder. Keep lifting your chest, lift your sternum tall. Sternum is the upper upper chest. Just lift that ear to shoulder. And then drop your chin now down to that same shoulder. And bring the ear back to the shoulder. Slowly take it up to center. Grab the other side. So you're grabbing the arm is straight. So you're pulling on the chair a little bit. And then just take the ear to the shoulder. You know, I mean, this is where up, up in the upper shoulders and the base of the neck, this is where we hold so much tension in our bodies. And then turn the chin to the shoulder. And then back to the ear. And lift the head up. I find that to me gives just gives me a ton of space in uh in the in the base of the neck and the shoulders i mean we all this is where we hold tension especially when we're doing this all day um uh, a super easy stretch you can do this anywhere but on a chair it's nice hook your thumbs elbows can be bent a little bit and just move your upper arms back now there's a tendency here to lift the chin don't lift the chin up keep the chin parallel with the floor just move your your upper arms back Keep lifting the sternum. And you feel these upper back ribs sort of move into the chest to lift you up. And then release the arms down. Bring the other thumb on top. Lift the sternum. Take the arms up and overhead. Elbows can be bent here. And we're starting to warm up not only, not only the shoulders, but the Side, these the the serratus anterior, which is these these muscles that, that help us with our breathing, uh, on the on the side rib cage, and then release the arms down. Okay, now, right arm forward, palm faces over to the left, lift that arm straight to the sky, and then bend the elbow, and bring the hand like you're trying to bring it onto your its own shoulder blade. Now, if you see my, my elbow, my, I'm really tight in my shoulders, so this happens. The elbow moves out to the side. Your other hand, grab onto the tricep and move the arm into the ear. So it's almost like you're trying to touch the ear with the bicep. And then use this same hand to just help the elbow lift up. You can walk your hand a little further down your back. And then take that same hand, grab the elbow, and just move the elbow slightly back. Keep lifting the chest, really nice upper back and shoulders. Notice if your shoulders are creeping up by the ears, intentionally relax the shoulders down as if your shoulders could become like liquid and melt down your back. This is something you can do while you're reading an email, while you're listening to a song and, not, and actually not typing something while you're listening to the song, but maybe actually just listening. All right, slowly release that. That can have a really nice effect. 
And then we'll do the other side. Left arm forward, reach it up to the sky in line with the ear. Bend the elbow and bring the hand towards its own shoulder blade. So to the upper back and then the, your, your free arm, right arm, grab the tricep, move it in towards the ear. Oh, this elbow lift, I find that gives me so much stretch here in the front, front underneath the armpit and the side ribs, lifting up. And then walk that hand up to the elbow and just pull the arm slightly back. You don't need to wrench it back. Just a little bit of energy. Okay, slowly start to release. These are just nice. You can do one of these shoulder exercises. You can do them all. You can do some of them, but we're counteracting this, uh, counteracting this, some of this work and opening this area so we can lift with a little bit more ease and the body isn't tight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, here's one. Here's one I really love. This is called Eagle Arms. And there's a few different ways to do this. I'm going to show you a few different ways. So arms out to the sides, left arm, reach it underneath the right, cross, and then cross again. Now, this is important. Some of us, the hands are going to touch, okay? Some of us, we're very tight in the shoulders, and this is where our arms are. If this is you, um, whatever the shape looks like doesn't mean you're better or worse at yoga or stretching. It just means you're tight in certain areas, which comes from our, our entire life, builds up to this moment. So don't, don't judge. Like I hear people all the time, like I can't do yoga, I can't touch my toes. Um, There's very little to do with whether you can do yoga or not. If you are here, a couple things, you could hook the thumbs. If that's not available, okay? Um, you can, you could use a belt. Sorry, this may seem weird, but you could use a belt. You could use a bathrobe tie. You could use a towel. And if the hands don't come together, you can grab, so the hands are separate. You can grab a strap or something, a bandana, anything like that. If a strap is in handy, wrap the arms like this. Okay. Now we've all found our eagle arms, left arm under the right. Now. Lift your elbows up, so your upper, your 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 uh, biceps and your triceps are parallel with the floor. Now, press the hands away from you. Okay, so the elbows are lifting, and think about here just a little bit of energy. Press the bottom arm up into the top arm, and the top arm down into the bottom arm. This is I, I think that this is so great for the upper back the tops of the shoulders, the arms. Lift your, lift your shoulders up by your ears. I feel how that causes some strain. Now keep the elbows lifted, relax the shoulders down. Make space between the tops of the shoulders and the ears. Okay, now from here, all right, I'm just gonna get here so you can see me a little bit. Take your right ear to your right shoulder. Keep lifting the elbows. Looks awkward when I see myself doing this, but right ear, right shoulder. Keep lip pressing the bottom arm up into the top arm. Turn your chin towards your shoulder. And then back to the ear towards the shoulder. Lift the head to center. Left ear to left shoulder. Notice if the elbows have dropped down, little energy in the elbows, lift them up. Turn your chin towards your left shoulder. Pressing the bottom arm up into the top arm. Move your ear back to the shoulder. And then start to lift the head. And slowly unwind the arms. Whew. Little shake, one direction and the other. Little worm, whatever you, you know, whatever's your, your jam. And then right arm underneath left. So we're just gonna do the other side. Cross, and then find your version. Some of us reaching around, grabbing opposite shoulder blades, lifting the elbows. Some of us hands touch, some of us hooking thumbs, some of us using a strap or something, a towel in between the hands. Lift the elbows. I know you guys got a lot of uh, promo t-shirts. You could always have a promo t-shirt in between the hands. Lift the elbows, press the hands away from the face. 
Keep the bottom arm pressing up into the top arm. Top arm presses down into bottom arm and release the shoulders down away from the ears. So they tend to creep up like we do when we hold stress and tension in the shoulders. Relax and release that down. Keep the elbows lifted. Left ear to left shoulder. I keep getting little cracks. It feels really nice. <laughs> keep moving the bottom arm up into the top arm. Turn your chin towards your left shoulder. And then back to the ear. Keep lifting the elbow. Take the head back up to center. And then over to the other side, right ear to right shoulder. Relax the shoulders, the base of the neck, down away from the ears. Bring your chin towards your shoulder, towards your right shoulder. Keep pressing the bottom arm up into the top arm as you bring the ear back to the shoulder. And then slowly lift the head up. Release the arms, unwind. Just a few rounding, round, little, little energy rounding the shoulders up and back. Okay, let's see here. I got so many things. I had to make a list. There's so many things we could do on a chair. Okay, see, I'm going to turn my chair here to the side. And I'm going to sit with the chair, the, the, what do you call that? The back of the chair on the left-hand side. Now. I'm, watch me here for a moment. I'm going to turn the upper body to grab onto the chair. But when I turn my body, this hip likes to turn with me. It's hard for you to see, but this hip is coming forward slightly. I don't want that to happen. So when I turn my upper body, I want to pull this hip back. So I'm square. My hips are square towards uh, what I'm facing. Okay. Draw your belly in slightly. That's going to help protect the lower back. As you take a long breath in, lift your chest, fill the lungs with breath. Now keep that right hip pulling back on an exhale, just turn your upper body a little or a lot towards the chair. Keep the sternum lifted, keep pulling the right hip back. So the twist is happening in the upper body. Deep breath in. And then on an exhale, slowly start to unwind. You could turn the opposite direction or I got a really light chair so I could just quickly demonstrate with it. So yeah, bring your body so that the back of the chair is on the other side, okay? And now before it feels like, ah, I'm just gonna go right to the twist, but you can see this hip starts to move forward. I'm rounded here. So first set your foundation. The hips are square, the sternum lifts, and then turn just the upper body. So this hip is pulling back, the belly draws in, to protect the lower back. The twist is happening here in the upper back. Breathe in, lift the sternum. Back, thigh bone back as you turn the upper body towards the back of the chair. Notice if you're clenching the jaw, notice if the shoulders creep up by the ear, all these, these unconscious habits and patterns that tend to show up. When you notice them, just let them go. Just make them conscious and release. Deep breath in, and then look forward and release out of your twist. So we've done a, a, some nice work for the upper back, the shoulders, and the chest. Okay, now facing forward, so the back of the chair is behind you, and you can move back a little bit so you can see me. Take your feet a little wider apart, okay? And from here, start to fold yourself forward. Back up a little bit more. Fold yourself forward. Now, if your hands don't reach the floor, that's okay. If you have a block, uh, like a back in the day, remember those things, dictionaries. <laughs> uh, if you have something you can stack the hands on, I'm gonna use a yoga block here just so you can, I can show you what that would look like. But we bring the ground a little higher so we have something to press down, okay? And then from here, now what I'm doing is I'm stretching the lower back, which when we're sitting all day can get compressed because these hip flexors are tightening and it puts pressure, can put pressure on the lower back. So we fold forward here. And now bring your left hand right under your nose. It might be on a book or a block or the floor. Okay? And take your 
right arm up to the sky. So you're twisting the upper body again. Now, if you see my lifted hand, sometimes the arm sort of swings back here a little bit lazily. Move the hand in line with its own shoulder and then lean that shoulder back. So it's like there's one long line of energy from fingertips through fingertips. Nice breath in, relax the jaw, relax the tongue and the mouth. Relax and the shoulders away from the ears and slowly release down. And then your right hand down under your nose. Reach the chest forward. Take a breath in, reach your chest forward. And on an exhale, sweep the left arm up and open to the sky. And then notice if that hand is sort of gone backwards, can you move it forward? And then lean this whole left shoulder back to twist the upper body open. And slowly release down. And now from here, while we're in this forward fold, just grab opposite elbows. Notice which arm is on top and let everything hang. I like to sway my torso side to side here a little bit. Helps me open the, the side ribs. And then whichever forearm is on top, just release the arms and bring the other hand, the other forearm on top. Let everything hang. Okay, release the elbows. You have to bring yourself back up to seated. Okay. And now from here, move more of your body towards the front of the chair. Okay. Now, I'm gonna, my arm bones, I'm gonna turn, if you watch my hand, I'm gonna turn the whole arm bone in the shoulder socket. So not just turning the wrist, but the whole arm bone. You can see how my back ribs lift up and I'm gonna bring my hands onto the back of the chair so the fingers face behind me. And when I do that and I lift my sternum, I could feel these upper back ribs moving as if up through the chest to the ceiling. And so without throwing the head back, press into the hands and lift the back ribs up. So you're opening the front chest, but notice sometimes we feel like we're getting a deeper back bend when we throw the head back, but let the chin stay parallel with the floor for a moment. Widen across your chest, move the back ribs in, open the heart, and then perhaps you take the head back. If someone has their hand on their upper, on your upper back, pressing it up through the chest to the ceiling. And then bring your chin down and slowly bring yourself to a seat. Okay. From here, slightly different. We're gonna actually stand and use the chair. Um, so here I am, here's my chair. Uh, what I'm gonna do here, I'll show you here first. Hands are on the chair. There's a few things I want you to pay attention to here. This is a, this is a wonderful pose. We're gonna to start to open not only the upper back, but now the back of the legs as well. I'm gonna walk my feet back until my spine comes parallel with the floor. But please notice, we're not walking the heels back behind the hips. I'm gonna walk my heels forward. So my heels are basically right under my hips. It's okay if my knees are bent. And then we want the arms to straighten. So I'm gonna slide the chair away from me. Note this, this is really important. Don't pull the chair towards you, all right? We don't want it to fall. You're pressing straight down into the chair. Firm these outer upper arms into the ears. And I like to, I have this on a wood floor so I can slide the chair forward. You can see how my spine now comes parallel with the floor. And I'm reaching my sit bones back as I reach my chest forward towards the chair. And my arms are active, actively pressing down into the chair. Now, if you can see the screen, notice if your head's hanging, lift your ears up in line with the arms. Now, if you can see the screen, notice my ribs here are poking towards the floor. So I get a little extra arch in the lower back. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw my lower ribs into the body. 
and watch what it does to my back if you can see the screen. And that starts to open me deeper in the upper back muscles, the stabilizing muscles of the spine. Now, for some of us, we have tight hamstrings. The back of the thighs will stay here. A few of us might start to straighten the legs. We, we don't want the weight back in the heels. Put a little bit more weight towards the fronts of the feet. Getting length. Reach the chest forward. Reach the sitting bones back. Relax the jaw. Relax the tongue and the mouth. Now start to bend the knees and walk yourself towards the chair to come up. I always find that to be a uh, quite a deceptively wonderful pose. It opens the backs of the legs. It opens the sides of the rib cage. I feel taller when I do that. I, 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 it, it's one of these poses like, yeah, I just lean forward on a chair, but it, it, the upper back opens, the shoulders release. It's really a, it's really a, has a lot of wonderful effects. It's a pose that almost multitasks. It does, it does a variety of, of wonderful things for the, uh, for the, for the body. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, okay. So we did that. All right. Now here's, here's one I'm going to show you. Now I'm turning, I'm turning the chair towards me and I'm pressing the chair against the desk. You can press it against the wall if you wanted. I'm going to adjust my screen here so you could see this a little bit further. Okay. Yeah, Levi, you better be stretching. Okay. From here now, uh, hands on the chair. I'm going to bring my left foot slightly forward. And I'm going to walk my right leg back until I'm in a lunge. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch leg. You, you stay where you're at, but I want to switch legs so you can see me here. So from here, this hip likes to stick out a little bit. I want you to hug the fr front leg, hug the hip into the body. Okay. And now from here, reach your chest forward and just straighten the front leg and then bend the front knee. Keep hugging the right hip in or the front hip in. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. So to, especially when we've been sitting for a while, we want to do this dynamically in and out. Straighten the leg. Exhale, bend. Now, Hug this hip in. We're going to keep this knee bent. Now, I want you to think as if there's a sandbag right here on your hips, pressing your hips down. Because what we're going to do is we're going to bend. Now, watch me when I straighten my back leg. My hips lift up. I don't want the hips to lift. So when I bend the knee, I'm going to keep the hips low and straighten the back leg. And that starts to open the front of this, uh, this hip flexor, which really tightens up when we sit all day. I'll show you here so you can see me. Bending, hips stay low, just straighten that back leg. Oh, boy, do I feel this. Bending, relax the jaw, and straighten. You can even do this with the breath. Exhale, bring the knee down. Inhale, straighten that leg, try to keep the hips low. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. And now lean your chest forward, step onto the front foot, bring the back foot up to meet it, and just switch legs. Bend a little deeper into the front knee and have the weight in the front heel so you're not gripping with the toes. Okay. Chest forward. And then just start to straighten on an inhale. Front leg straightens. Exhale, bend. Maybe you bend a little deeper into the front knee. Hug the front hip in. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Nice, long, deep breaths. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. I also wanted to give you some breath work too, but there's just so much of this. Uh, but breath work is also very, very powerful. A couple more times. I'll give you some resources for breath work if that interests you at all after the class. Now, front knee bent, bend your back knee, keep the hips low, straighten the back leg. Hello, front of hip, bend the knee, and straighten. 
Bend the knee. Try to keep the hips low, straighten the back leg. Bend the knee lower down. And straighten. Press through that heel. Press this back thigh bone up towards the ceiling. And start to lean forward. Step onto the front foot. Bring the back foot up to meet it. What's crazy about that pose we just did is the psoas muscle. It is from, from deep in the inner thigh. That, this comes very deep. It comes up and in. It comes around and it attaches to the spine. The psoas is the muscle that attaches, a very important muscle that attaches the lower part of the body to the upper part of the body. And if it attaches to the back of the spine and the front of the hip and your hip flexors are tight, then what's it doing to the spine? So we want to do those stretches to open. It's really, really nice. Um, oh, yes, spring. It, 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 exactly. That's my point is that it can really help with lower back stuff. When you have, I mean, there's, there are, variety of causes of lower back issues. So this is not a cure-all by any means, but often when you have pain in one side of the body or discomfort, if you stretch the other side, it can often relieve some of the, some of the, the discomfort on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the side where it was hurting. So I'm glad, glad that works for you, glad that resonates. Um, okay, so you might wanna do the one we just did, but for some of us, I'm gonna offer just a little bit of a variation on this, but it all depends on how tight you are in your hip flexors for this. So I'm gonna step my foot up on the chair and I'm gonna leave my hands on the chair. I'm gonna walk my back leg back. You can see my back heel is lifted, okay? Hug this front hip in, okay? Now press through the back heel. So you're pressing this back thigh bone back chest forward. Uh, my left leg is forward. So my right hand down, twist the body open, left arm to the sky, and then bring it down. Inhale, lift the left arm. Exhale, come down. You can do that a few more times. If you felt like you wanted to explore something a little bit different with this twist. If this is a lot for your upper back, stay right with this, it's wonderful. It's just another way to stretch is lift the torso up, bring your right hand outside the left knee and press the hands, stack the elbows. And you press this left knee out into the right arm, reach your chest long, turn the heart open. So there's a few different versions of these things and then release down. Now step onto the chair so you can bring the back foot up and come down. And we'll take the second side, other foot, whichever foot you took forward, take the other one, and then walk the back leg back. Okay. This front hip, hug it in, press your heel, long leg, back leg, heel back, chest forward. Press your left hand down. On an inhale, sweep the right arm open. Keep hugging the right hip into the body. And on an exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Notice at the top, if you start to clench the jaw, start to tighten. See if you can relax anywhere you're tightening. It's often unconscious. And if it's happening here, those unconscious patterns of holding tension in the body here, it's likely happening when you are in traffic or when you get that email from that person, or that friend says that thing, or that former friend posts that thing in our divided world. Just notice these unconscious patterns show up in all sorts of places. You can keep doing this, or you can bring the left arm up, bring the left arm outside the leg, hands together, chest forward, press the front knee out into the arm to turn the heart open. Okay, those habits, those patterns show up in every situation. If you can start to notice them, when they show up, you can start to let them go. You can start to release gripping and clenching and tightening. And, and slowly release whichever version you've taken. Hands on the chair, step onto the front, on the, onto the chair to bring the back leg up. 
and make your way down. I literally could continue. I could give you uh, so many different. I want to give you one more, but I, I could go on like this. Like if this were a two hour workshop, we might start to be able to go into so many other other areas. But here's a great one. A lot of us have. Uh, hey, Christine. Um, I love that I see so many friends here. You guys, are, this is really, really nice. This is a real colliding of worlds for me. Um, so this one, a lot of us do, but we don't often do consciously. And so that we can sort of twist the body, but I'm gonna step down to my right foot, lift my left knee, and then I turn the whole thigh bone in the hip socket, bring my ankle over my knee. This is important. See this foot? A lot of times we do this and this foot is, is sort of lazy. We want to, we call this dorsiflexing the foot, pull the toes back. So I'm really flexing this foot. Why? Two reasons. One, when I'm hanging here, it puts more pressure for some of us in the outer knee. So when we flex the foot, it engages the muscles to protect the joint instead of dumping into the joint. So flex the foot. And when you flex the foot, you might also, if you're tight in the hips like me, you might start to feel some some a little stretching in the outer thigh and the outer hip. And for my friends talking about the lower back, where is that connected? Lower back stuff. So you might stay right here. And if the knee is way up here, if you're tight, I just encourage you to hold on to the, hold on to the joint, keep the foot flexed, okay? Now you might choose to stay right here. This might be a big stretch for some of you. Some of us might start to, Keeping the foot flexed, lean your chest forward. Ooh, hello. Notice if your hips start to turn, one hip turning forward or the other. Try to keep the hips against the back of the chair so your front hips are square to the wall, to what you're looking to square forward. And you lower down, keep this lifted foot flexed, lifted leg, the foot of the lifted leg, keep it flexed, holding yourself forward. Lovely stretch for the outer hips. Doing this when we're sitting all day, doing this multiple times a day, oh, can have wonderful benefits. Lift yourself up, start to unwind. I'm gonna show you something here, just in my body. This is the last pose we're gonna do, and then I'll just talk to you for a couple of things real quick. But I want you to see the difference in my body. So you see this, like this leg is, you know, it sort of looks like this is a table. Like this leg is parallel to the floor, okay? I want you to see the other side of my body because this happens with a lot of us. You see how high my knee is? The other one, the, the leg, I have to lift my hip to demonstrate this to you. See how twisted my body is? Okay, so on this side, I'm flexing the foot a lot and I'm keeping a hand here because this side of my body is much tighter. And so I can't, if I'm very linear in my thinking and I try to do the exact same thing on both sides, I'm going to be pressuring the joint so please cut yourself some slack and be kind to yourself. We live in a world that's go, 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 do, 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 accomplish, 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 multitask. You have to be better. Um, you know, some of the images we see of yoga online are, um, uh, you know, they're equivalent to like an Olympic gymnastic, gymnast. And that's not necessarily what yoga is, but when we look at a, uh, visual. It's nice to see a gymnast do their thing. And it's nice to see uh, an incredible yoga pose of some sort, but not all bodies go that way. And that's okay. And it doesn't mean you're not doing yoga. And it doesn't mean you're not good at yoga. If you show up, carve out some time for yourself in our busy days, and just be kind to yourself and lean the body in the right direction. I'm your biggest fan. Right? You're doing you're doing wonderful things for yourself. So I've stayed here for a while. My knee has gone down a little bit, a little bit because I'm stretching this outer thigh, but it's still really tight in the hip. And I don't want to put that knee at risk. So I'm not going to lean my torso forward here. I'm just going to support that joint. Some of us have folded forward. Great. Flexing the foot. Yeah, we, that tends to sort of go unconscious. Keep that, that, keep, uh, keep that conscious work in the foot. And that's really going to help for some of us, 
this, uh, this is not ever a blanket statement for everyone, but it can start to stretch the outer. We call this the IT band. You runners know what I'm talking about, the outer thigh, outer hip, low back. Big breath in. And slowly exhale, support the knee and make your way out. So much more I could I could do and I want to do, but uh, I, I want to be uh, respectful of your time. So uh, uh, just just a couple quick things. I uh, I teach for uh, I teach for a company called Yoga Works, and I've taught for them to, for almost fifteen years. And they, um, well, first of all, if Al, if you could, if someone could, if you could put my contact info in the chat. If anybody would like to reach out to me about questions uh, about what we did today or um, or questions about yoga, or, you know, some of us like, I'm curious about yoga, but I'm not sure. It would be my great honor to help guide you towards some resources. So you please reach out to me if you'd like. I think they're gonna put my, my, uh, my, my info in the chat. And then also, if you're interested in exploring yoga, I was saying about yoga works, this is not a promo for yoga works. I get nothing from this, but I reached out to them telling them I was doing this event and they have a robust online platform and uh, with both on-demand classes and live streaming classes. Like tonight, later, I teach a, I teach a class. I teach there four times a week. Uh, they gave me a code for a really good price. Uh, I think the code is good for a month. Um, I, uh, I think they're going to put it in the chat also, but it, it works out to like $19 a month. Uh, is is what they're offering, which is a pretty good price from uh, what I know they've been doing. So, and you have access to all these classes on demand, 15 minute classes, 30 minute classes, 45 minute classes, level one, strong flow, arm balances, twists, restorative, and everything in between. Uh, so if you wanna utilize that, um, and for you, for the for the folks here, if you want to send that out to the to the whole Guild of Music Supervisors email list or whatever, um, that's a limited time promo that they and the code is my name and it says 1987. Um, I, again, I get nothing out of it, and I certainly was not born in 1987. Although I love that they put that in there. If that's what you want to think, you're welcome to, uh, but that's not the case. Um, so um, I think I'll stop it there because I tend to talk in tangents and. Um, Al, is there anything you wanted to add before we go to a Q&A? Sure. Yeah, if anyone wants to have any questions, please throw them in the chat. Um, I just want to make one comment also. One of the things I always love and appreciate about taking your classes, um, I am not. I am the one who he might be referencing when he says, if you're not very bendy, uh, you can do it this way and that way. Um, he's been very gracious whenever I've taken his class. I imagine he does it not just for me, but for everybody. But he kind of creates this scale of, you know, people who can be more advanced or people who are beginners and everyone can do the stretch in their own pace. And he's very conscious of that stuff. So I think it's a really great uh, technique of yours, Joe, and something I definitely appreciate. Well, to, to that point, Al, I just want to say that, um, you know, a lot of people say these words and I'm not, this isn't a criticism, but it's not like one version is advanced and one version is less than. Uh, like I said, if you're showing up and you're and you are moving the body in a direction, it's great. Some folks have more flexibility in certain areas of their body, and if so, there are modifications for them. Some folks are less flexible in their body, or perhaps we had an injury, a car accident 20 years ago that still does that thing in the shoulder, or or the hip is tight. We have modifications for those folks too, and. Um, it's not about what you can do, like what version of a pose you can, although sometimes that's nice to break through to new ground, but just know that, I, I mean, it's hard for people to carve out time for themselves and to do this. So I like to try to offer a wide variety of, um, of options for people. It's important. It's it could just be intimidating for someone like me who's novice. So it's, it's just, it's just very helpful technique. So I just want to mention that. You know, I really love the neck stretch and the hand stretch and the shoulder. Everything was really cool. Um, you kind of touched on this in the middle of while you were doing this. Like, what role does breathing play in all this? Uh, well, you know, if if you look at uh, you know yoga philosophy that's thousands of years old, there are um, there are uh, yes. Don't stand on your roller chair. Thank you for that comment. I probably should have specified that, uh, but uh, hopefully. 
you 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 have you, that came to mind for you. Um, if you look at ancient yoga philosophy, yoga is is sort of broken up into a pie of 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 different uh, different tools that all have the same level of importance. And working with the breath is as important as meditation. Working with the breath and meditation are as important as developing focus and concentration. Working with the breath has the same level of importance as working with the shapes of the body. And then there's several other, that's a whole other, that's a whole other workshop, yoga philosophy. But it, it so we have breath techniques that we do. And uh, some of them we do in during classes. Some of them we, we utilize as meditations. Some of them help lift our energy when we're feeling sluggish. Some of us help to calm our energy when we are feeling agitated or stressed or anxiety. We can, we can uh, implement some, some breathing exercises and techniques. So it's, it's, it's very, very profound. And for folks, I also find for folks who try to meditate but can't, you know, oh, I can't sit still, my mind is racing. Doing breath work gives you something to meditate on. So it gives you something to focus on. And that to me is a, a great gateway to uh, having a, a, a more robust life. Very cool. Well, we got a question in the chat. I'm just wondering, this is from Chris, Kristen Davies. Just want to know if there is one yoga pose that you would recommend for us to incorporate into every single day. What would it be? It would be one pose you could recommend. Uh, uh, well, other than meditation, but that's a, a teacher talking to me. Um, you know, it, it depends. However, it depends on the person. It's it's tough to really answer this. However, I really find that eagle pose is nice uh, for for what we were talking about for this this shape, because when we round and when we're here. And the chin comes forward. It's because of all the tightness up here, which then starts to blend down here. When we do this work, all right, you can see that I just, just to do that, I have to, and to lift the elbows, you see my spine grows tall, right? And I'm, when I press the arms into each other, I am stretching out also the tops of the shoulders, not just the center of the back, but across the neck and the tops of the shoulders and around. And then while you're doing that, you can add, if it feels okay in your neck, you can move the ear to the shoulder and then you change sides and do it again. So that's, that's one I would recommend. And that's something, you know, while you're watching your, while, while you're watching your dailies and, and, and while you're doing a music search or, or you know, I, I don't want to assume everybody has the same role. I, I know there's a, there's a lot of different creatives here, but while you're doing something that requires you to watch and not type, you can do things like this. You know, you can watch the scene and visualize the where the where the music's going to go and what part of the song and am I going to oh I you know I'm going to have to ask for the instrumental version of that because that's going to work really well there, huh? And what else can I you know while you're there's so many of these things you could do without leaving your desk, like well like while you're working. So another question popped in. This is from Jeremy yeah. Beck. <clears throat> Just wondering what kind of mouse do you use? Um, you know, you said, do you use a trackball or a trackpad? He's been trying different things. Um, and just, you know, he's getting massive tightening in his thumb and forearm. And is there any recommendation with regards to that? Yeah. Um, well, I, I have gone through several and I don't know that any, I, I don't know that I've settled on one, but what I did when I had an ergonomic review back in the day years ago, uh, from work, it was so kind of them to do. <laughs> I bless you. Um, I realized I salute. Uh, mm -hmm. I realized that I was um, was here, and you can see I'm rounded. And then I was my chair was low, and so I was typing here, putting a lot of pressure on my wrists. Okay, so when I learned the from the ergonomic review that I needed a higher chair. And the elbows, the forearms should be parallel with the floor. And that's where the mouse goes. And that's why I'm not sure if, if uh, I, I said this at the beginning, and I know a lot of people popped in later. Um, when I sit to help me with that, I either use a yoga block or, or this sort of half blown up, uh, you know, little kid's ball, right? And I put them right behind my upper back. I'll use the block so you can see it here. I put this behind the upper back, turn so you can see it. And so when I press into that, it moves my back ribs in, and lifts my chest. And I'm, I'm not saying this is, 
risk risk stuff can come from a variety of places but i do know that when we're here that that work that can change what's going on in the wrist i heard a teacher once tell me that the small joints suffer the sins of the big joints so if we can work on our posture here and i use that block and then when i'm unconscious and i'm typing i lean forward that block falls down it's my reminder to get back into my into this and when you do this you're this is a chain reaction for some of us so perhaps this might help you i don't have the I don't have the, the sort of the mouse answer because I think it's different for everyone. And, and when it comes to the forearm, there's, a, there's so many mechanisms in the hands and the wrists. Um, it, it's, it's tough to pinpoint. And, and I, I, I encourage you to, you know, to when we can see uh, health practitioners to see a hand specialist and talk to them about it. And, um, try everything in the world before, you know, somebody recommend it's I'm not about, it's not about surgery. It's about what can you do? Uh, what can you do and what, what exercises or what can you implement every day to, to help give you a little bit more ease and make a little bit more space in your body. And that's really, that's, it becomes, a, it becomes part of your daily routine. There are yoga poses I do every day because, especially with that left side where I showed you guys, because I'm so much tighter on this side. These poses I do every day and will likely do for the rest of my life. Um, There's a couple of good uh, recommendations in the chat. One was uh, switching oh, hands. Uh, try and use your non-dominant hand. Um, and there was a, another one. There's a video gamer hand stretches and other stuff when it comes to mouse and keyboard strain. So check them out. It's in the chat. We're going to we're around on the corner here and need to wrap it up, Joe. But before we go, are there any events yeah. coming up or any things coming up you want to plug? Um, well, you know, again, reach out to me if you have any interest in, in yoga. Any questions like, hey, what 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 is my first class? I've never done yoga. I can I can guide you towards something on the Yoga Works platform or somewhere else. Um, and yeah, I mean, this isn't really about me plugging anything. I mean, I have, you know, I run retreats. I have a retreat coming up in France at the end of the summer. That has been bumped a couple times uh, due to COVID. Uh, my yoga retreats are very much uh, daily yoga, but it's really like a well-planned vacation and culture and day trips and castles and food and wine if you're into it and things like that. And we do yoga every day, sometimes twice a day. So I have France at the end of September and I have one on the West Coast side of Mexico um, a uh, little north of Puerto Vallarta, uh, place near Sayulita, uh, in April of next year. But whatever with that, like you know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm here for you guys. So if you have any questions, uh, please please feel free to reach out to me. It would be my honor to guide you towards any resources that may be helpful to you. Cool. All the uh, Joe's information is in the chat. So grab it up and reach out to him as needed. Um, you know, he's awesome, and and we'll definitely be able to help you. So. Um, I'm going to kick it back over to Patty Joe. I want to say thanks to all you all for attending and a special thanks to my dear friend Joe for doing this. This was, a, as always, amazing. And uh, you're the best, man. Thank you. Uh, thanks, brother. So I really appreciate you guys having me. And I'm so glad so many people are interested in this. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Patty Joe, you want to close it out? Yeah, thanks guys. Joe, I want to thank you especially for I think I just grew about two inches. Oh, and good. uh I I you know that these chair stretches, they seem simple and 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 all of them really start to feel more like little massages in the body. And if we can incorporate that a little bit throughout the day, I think uh that stress relief will start to kick in. Um so thank you. And Al, thanks for uh once again hosting this event tonight. I think you know, we can say is uh, part of the committee on the Guild of Music Supervisors East. We're proud of being able to provide some of these um, events for the uh, mental health and, and well-being series, as well as other upcoming events. Um, our last of the series is actually on May 20th. You guys should try to join in with Rain Phoenix. There's uh, information you can find on our socials. Um, if you like the events and you want to give us some feedback, feel free to send us a DM through Facebook or Instagram. Let us know how you like it. If you want to hear more of these type of events or, or have ideas for more events like this, this would be great. We have other 
obviously events coming up as well, educational events within our actual industry um, related to networking and, and uh, you know, specifics on topics with regard to synchronization. Um, so again, feel free if you're considering joining, please, uh, you know, um, feel read up on the guild's uh, requirements of um, eligibility. But if you're not a music supervisor, don't feel like that's not a reason to join. There's plenty of uh, educational and networking um, events that you can join in as a friend of the guild. All are welcome, you know, music creators, publishers, record label executives, artists, composers, all that cross pollinate this wonderful music and synchronization licensing community. We're all welcome and we all can take advantage of these events and um, get a lot of benefits from it. So please join us once again, and uh, we hope to see you all soon. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate Thanks, everyone. It.